Coming out of high school, Emory Jones was a four-star recruit quarterback that almost every single college wanted. When I say every single college, I mean it. I'm talking about Florida, Alabama, Ohio State, Florida State, Auburn, Clemson, Georgia, every big time Power 5 school. To go along with being a four-star recruit, he was also one of the most talented players in all of high school. When you hear the phrase dual threat quarterback, you think of somebody that can pass and run on the side. It was much different for Emory. He was so good at running the football, I would describe him as a running back that could also throw. I want to make this clear, I'm not calling him Lamar Jackson. I'm saying if I had to compare him to a player coming out of high school, that would be the guy. In most situations, when you see a four or five star recruit get to college, the hype tends to die down because they're surrounded with many other good players. That right there actually didn't happen. If anything, the hype only got bigger. How big, may you ask? Well, it had many people going into the season asking the question if he could be the best Florida quarterback of all time. That is a huge and big statement to even say because when you think of Florida quarterbacks, you gotta remember Tim freaking Tebow is one of the greatest college football players of all time. You also had many people around the country asking if he was going to be the best quarterback in the SEC this year. I'm not all too sure as to why people would even believe in him. I'm not saying that he's not going to be a great and successful quarterback. All I'm saying is, going into the season, he didn't prove anything. Ever since his glory days at the high school level, things have gone downhill dramatically fast. He's now getting booed by his own fans. And in today's game, he actually got benched and he may never be a starting quarterback the rest of his career. Life comes at you fast, especially when you try to play quarterback at the college level. So therefore, it leaves us with the question today. What happened to Emory Jones? What's good, y'all? Hope you're having a blessed day. Just want to drop by and say, if you're enjoying the story times and you like football, basketball, or any content like this, I'd appreciate it. If you join the family, hit that subscribe button and leave a like for more. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Good old Emory Jones. He seems like a great and humble kid. Uh, you know, I ain't got nothing against him. I just can't believe people were saying he could possibly be the greatest Florida quarterback of all time. That's so, I can't even say that sentence without laughing. It's no disrespect to the kid whatsoever. It's more of, I have so much respect for Tim Tebow. If we're being real, Florida fans haven't had much to cheer about since Tebow left. Last year, they had a good quarterback in Kyle Trask. They still didn't have that great of a season. We're not here to focus on Trask. We're here to talk about Jones and what's going on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You already know. To get into his story, we gotta throw it all the way back to where things started. I don't want to spend too much time talking about his high school career. It was typical of your dual threat quarterback. He passed for a lot of yards. He also ran for a lot of yards. He completely balled out. He showed his athletic ability. When you're talking about four-star recruits or even five-star recruits, they expose kids at the high school level. Some of those kids, they're just playing because their mommy and daddies want them to. So when you look at the reality, if you have a six foot three, 200 pound athletic freak going up against a five foot seven math nerd that plays on the offensive line or plays safety or cornerback, it's a mismatch. With that being said, that is why we are going to skip past his high school career. All you need to know is he was good. Maybe saying good would be an understatement. He was great. His recruiting process was sort of odd. He committed to Ohio State originally, then he decommitted to sign at Florida. I want to make this very clear. I know we're going to have a lot of Florida fans watching this video. This guy, Emory Jones, the person I'm talking about, this was his quarterback he was grooming to be the next big star. When he got to Florida, this was the guy he was recruiting, and this was his first big-time quarterback pickup. A lot of people think Trask was, no. Trask wasn't Dan Mullen's recruit. Kyle Trask was somebody that Mullen inherited from the previous coaching staff. He got lucky. Before we go any farther, I'm almost 95% sure on that statement. Kyle was there before Mullen got there. If I'm wrong, feel free to correct me down below. For Emory Jones, he has been more than patient. He has waited his turn. He redshirted his first year in 2018. He did play and he threw 16 passes, completed 12 of them, it was in garbage time. I'm going to be pretty critical of him in this video only due to the fact he's now been at Florida for four years. There's no excuses for him to have any errors. He hasn't been there for only one year or two years. He's not new to the playbook. He's been there forever. He's had plenty of time to practice, work out, do everything to be successful. When it comes to college basketball or college football players, 
It's not 1995. Freshmen don't sit the bench right away. They come in and they produce. You really can't even use the freshman excuse in 2021. And for me, I'm not giving it out. So for Emory Jones, who's been there for four years, you're definitely not getting a pass from me. Not only is he not getting a pass from Matt B. Great, his fans are more mad than me. Anyways, continuing on, moving on with this video, in 2019 and 20, it was relatively the same thing. He was the backup playing garbage minutes. One key piece we do need to touch on in 2020, I remember heading into that season, some people, not some, actually I'd say 60 to 70% thought he was going to beat out Trask for the job. There was a quarterback competition. Ultimately, Trask won it. He had a spectacular season. To sum up his first three years at Florida, he was a bench player. In 2021, we can now get into the intriguing and juicy stuff. Coming into 2021, you got some people saying he's the best thing since sliced bread. You got others saying he could be the best Florida quarterback of all time, etc., etc. In this season so far, especially after today, it's been rough. I'm going to read off his numbers real shortly. I think you guys like to get the stats so you can also get a perspective. I'm not big into numbers. I've said that before. I'm always going to continue to say it because I think the eye test does matter. For Emory so far in the season, he's completing roughly 68% of his passes, thrown for over 1,000 yards, has 9 touchdowns and 7 interceptions. His total QBR is 69.2 not all terrible qbr is based on a scale of 1 to 100 with 50 being average if you want to be a nerd about it he's above average oh yeah i almost forgot to mention he does run the ball here and there he hasn't rushed for too many yards against alabama he had 77 rushing yards against tennessee he went off for 144 ever since the tennessee game he hasn't even passed 60. in today's ball game against lsu Fans were not too happy about it. They went on Twitter and they let him hear about it. If you're a Florida fan or SEC fan, you keep up with this at all. This isn't something new. I remember going into the Alabama game, the fans wanted Anthony Richardson to start. The best way to compare this situation is really similar to Spencer Rattler. The more I think about it, it's almost identical. You got Emory Jones who's got pressure on him to succeed. Anytime he slips up or throws an interception, the fan base is going to boo him. On the other hand, you have a backup quarterback who's tall, talented, and can also run. In today's ball game, they lost to LSU 49-42. I enjoyed this game. It was a really good game to watch. The worst thing with Emory Jones, and it's frustrating for Florida fans, I'm not a Florida fan. I can see where they're coming from, though. He makes a couple good plays. He makes some good runs. Then he throws terrible passes. With Jones at quarterback for Florida, the best way to describe it is he takes two steps forward and three steps back. For example, when I'm watching the games, I'm like, okay, okay, he's all right. Then boom, he messes up. Straight up frustrating and mind boggling. I can't even make up myself if I think he's a good quarterback or an average one. I will say this, I'm going to stick up for him. If you say he's terrible or a bad quarterback, you're delusional. He's not bad. I ain't saying he's good. All I'm saying is he's not bad. If you want me to keep it a buck with you, Florida's biggest problem is not the quarterback. I know that's what everybody thinks it is. No, it's their head coach. I'm a firm believer in life. You are who you hang out with. If your head coach in high school basketball, middle school, college basketball, the NBA, if he's a leader, he holds you accountable, you're going to pick up his habits. On the contrary, if your head coach doesn't hold you accountable and, you know, against a crappy team, he doesn't take practices serious, plays down to the competition, his players are going to do the same thing. To put it in a better perspective, I know people hate on Alabama and they don't want to hear it, but it's a great example. The reason Alabama is the best of the best, the reason Nick Saban is the greatest college football coach of all time is because of his process. Alabama doesn't play against other teams. They play against themselves. It doesn't matter if Alabama is playing Vanderbilt or Georgia. They're going to practice the same way and they're going to do everything the same way. They stick to their core principles. And who's they? It starts with Nick Saban, the head coach, the players, they feed off of the energy. I know some of you are probably sitting there thinking, yo, Matt, this is supposed to be about Emory Jones. I want you to understand it starts with Dan Mullen. Anyone with a decent IQ can figure out this isn't hard. It's fairly simple. Florida's main problem is they play down to competition. Is it not fishy to you how the past two to three times they've played Alabama, it's a close game? That's how Florida is. They get excited for the big games and they can get up for the big games. It doesn't matter if they're playing Alabama or they're playing Kentucky. They're going to play to their competition. 
that's what's messed up. Why does Florida players play down or up to their competition? I hate to say this, they don't respect their head coach. They don't. They simply don't. They're not scared of them. On the other hand, those Alabama players, Georgia players, Ohio State players, they respect their head coach. You can say what you want about Ed Ogeron at LSU. They're a confusing team. I don't think he's lost his team just yet. For Florida, that team's gone. Back on topic with Emory Jones, I'm not blaming the kid as much. I'm blaming Dan Mullen for his lack of success. Here's why. Why is Nick Saban the greatest of all time? Because he can get five-star recruits to play like five-star recruits. Alabama is the best at developing talent and getting them to the next level. Jones has been at Florida for now four years and Dan Mullen has failed to put him in a winning situation and in a position to succeed. I truly don't believe the fan base is all that mad at Emory Jones. What they're mad about is Dan Mullen isn't making a change when things aren't working. Why not throw AR-15 in, that's Anthony Richardson, what's it going to hurt? The season's already over. When Richardson came in in this LSU ball game, you know what I saw? I saw a team get excited, very similar to the Oklahoma situation. They saw a guy come in off the bench. He was looking okay slash good. It sparked the team. I think Anthony Richardson is the better option at quarterback. He, I don't know how to describe it. You know how you can tell when a guy fits in with a team, he looks like a quarterback that should play for that team. That's what I see with Richardson. He looks like a typical Florida quarterback. Maybe it's the number 15. I don't know what it is. In this ball game, if you're curious, he was 10 for 19 with 167 yards, three touchdowns to two costly, I'm gonna emphasize that again, costly interceptions. The interceptions were poor decisions. He's a young quarterback, hasn't played that much. He'll learn from it. His QBR was 88.5. Emory Jones was 28. I wasn't too concerned with his interceptions. He made up for it. I think if Richardson didn't come in, it wouldn't have been that close in the first place. In life, you got winners, you got losers. Dan Mullen is a certified bozo. Why is he a bozo, Matt? He doesn't know how to lead a football team. I don't think Emory Jones is a bad football player. I don't think he's a good quarterback. I could see him being a wide receiver, cornerback. He just can't pass the ball. Richardson's a different story. I see a bright career ahead of him. So to answer the question, the topic of this video, what happened to Emory Jones? Dan Mullen. Dan Mullen is what happened to Emory Jones. And also the fact that he's not the greatest passer. But if you know your quarterback's not a good passer, quit designing all these pass plays. Design run plays. To be honest, I think once he got to Florida, he got this big ego. At Mississippi State, I thought it was cool. Now, not so much. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. But with all that being said, it's going to wrap up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and leave a like for more. And as always, let's be great. I'm out, y'all. Peace.